I am Raymond Moody, and these are my thoughts on reincarnation. Where I've come to in my life is uh, I, I expect that something like reincarnation is true. And um, the reason I came to it is very unusual. And uh, it has nothing to do with parapsychology and so on, because uh, my ideas about it come from two sources. Number one, ancient Greek philosophy, because in the, in the United States, there's this myth that ideas about reincarnation first came into the West through India back in the 19th century. But that's just simply not correct because reincarnation it was present as, as an idea at the very beginning of Western civilization. And Pythagoras, for example, who was the person who coined the term philosophy, was a reincarnationist and he claimed to remember eight of his past lives and had some technique that he was able to get his his students to have that experience as well and as part of their pythagorean training when they woke up in the morning before they got out of bed they would have to retrace their steps of the day before like go through the entire day step by step before they got out of bed. And then if they mastered that, then they would have to go back one day further than that the day before. And the reason for this training was they felt that if they could so exquisitely train their memories, then when they got into the situation of choosing their next life, they would remember what they had picked up in this life to be able to augment it. So you see, Reincarnation was there at the beginning. Plato was a reincarnationist and had some very brilliant perceptions, I think, about the reincarnation process. One of them being that he made an articulate statement about why we don't remember our past lives. And what he did was he formulated it in terms of an experience that every one of us has had. And it's, it's called in psychology an event boundary. What an event boundary is, is an event boundary has to do with the fact that the mind puts things into little packets for processing. And when you get out of that packet, you may not have access to that information. And the most common example is that you're in the living room and you think of something you want to get in the kitchen. So what happens as soon as you go through the doorway into the kitchen, what? You forget what you came in there for. And that's an event boundary. And Plato articulated how that is involved in the, the reincarnation experience. So that was one input to, to me. And the other has to do with my wonderful adopted children. And I should explain that my wife and I don't attend religious ceremonies. We don't we don't take the kids to any religious things. And also, we don't talk about life after death. What we talk about is what's for dinner, what's the kids' homework, and so on. So these kids have really been raised in isolation from this. And the way they found out eventually that I had anything to do with life after death was looking me up on the internet. So that's the background. now. When Carter was five years old, he and I were lying on the bed watching TV and I was flipping through the channels. Whereas Carter became very animated. He said, Dad, Dad, that's my village. What? So I turned it back. It was a documentary about village life in China. So Carter said to me, yeah, that's my village. And he could tell that I was confused. And he said, yeah, like, you know, before I came to you and mom, I was in China with my other mom and dad and my brothers and sisters. And, you know, and then he could tell I was still confused. So then he said, yeah. And he said, then I was up in the trees looking at you and mom down lying in the grass. And I knew exactly what he was talking about because five years before he came along, my wife and I were on a tour of, of Greece and we went to this archeological site and the attendant could tell we were just exhausted from our trip. So he said, lie down in the grass over there and take a nap. Well, 
There were trees all around us. And so what we were talking about was adopting a baby. Okay, now, my wife and I just didn't follow it up. It's like, you know, if you had gone on and asked questions, then you had a danger of shaping the story, right? But we just don't talk about this. But what this means is that Carter sometimes brings it up even now. Just like a couple of years ago, I was walking into the foyer of our house, and he sort of purposely took me aside. He looked at me, he said, Dad, you know I came here for you, don't you? And I said, yeah, yeah. Now, my daughter Carol Ann is Blackfeet, Native American. Again, we adopted her at birth. No religious background. We don't talk to the kids about stuff like this. So she took these long walks to me and about, I guess, eight or nine years ago, walking along our route and there was this old wooden bridge. She just loves to sit there and talk. So this one day out of nowhere, she said, I don't like this place. And it was obvious that what she was talking about was the world. So I was sort of shocked and she said, yeah. And she said, you know, she said, when you die, you just go up and you be with God and he keeps you there till all the people you know while you're alive have died. And then he sends you back as another person. So I said, well, what makes you think that? And she said, I just know in my mind. And then she said, and I was with God and God pointed you out to me. And he said, you got to go down to be his daughter. And I said, well, how did you feel about that? And she said, oh, I didn't want to do it. I wanted to stay with my Gaudi. But she said, but he pushed me down to be your daughter. And so I said, well, are you glad you came anyway? And she said, yeah, sure. Now, again, I don't, we don't follow these things up. But what that means is eventually they when I went, took my daughter to Japan about a year ago, and I heard her in another table holding forth about this, and she told this to the people on the table. So um, I think that there's reincarnation because that's what my kids have told me. And uh, I really believe them because believe me, when you have a kids, when you're in your 50s, you observe, you know, it's uh, you really do. It's very difficult to define the essence of what we are, that inner thing that we identify our, as ourselves. And maybe because it's so basic to us that there's not many words for it, right? I mean, it's just that the rock bottom. You can't get much further down in your analysis than that basic rock bottom sense of self-identity you have. And there aren't any good words for it. I, I think of it as a... Um, that what I consist of is a conscious locus, as it is, a sort of locus of intense personal identity that I regard as myself, and that it is the subject that I am talking about when I say the word I, for example, and that it is the entity that is persisted through this life story that I've lived. However, to get it beyond that becomes more confusing because granted, let's say that I've been reincarnated, then what is the relationship between that conscious self that I am now and the conscious self that inhabited some other life in some previous century? So, I mean, I just don't know the answer to that, but I mean, I'm constantly grappling with it and trying to figure it out. but. Um, you know, some of the greatest philosophers have said that it's entirely an illusion. I think that's what they think in Hinduism too, isn't it? That the, our sense of self is just really illusory. If it is an illusion, that's it's the most persistent illusion because uh, even when everything else kind of turns out to be a dream or illusion, at least you feel like that you are you. That was the whole point of Descartes, you know, like, he was trying to find a premise that nobody could deny. So what he found in it is, is as long as I am thinking, I think I am. So if I'm thinking, I am. But then to try to define in simple terms what that thinking is or that conscious process is, is uh, very difficult.
what Plato says is that after you leave your body on this existence, then you go into some other realm. And after some length of time has elapsed on this earth plane, for some reason you choose to go back. And according to Plato anyway, there is a, a conscious process in selecting the life that you're going to lead and that you consider different alternatives and then that you choose someone that I gather that you would uh, feel that you would learn something from. <music>